Good day, everybody. This is Chris with the Ancient Scholar. I hope this video finds you all doing well. In this video, I am going to supplement some of the material I've been covering in my ECG interpretation course for the 2023-2024 paramedic cohort. I feel I need to spend some additional time differentiating the STEMI paradigm from the OMI paradigm. So let's go ahead and see if we can simplify this concept and compare and contrast and differentiate the two paradigms. All right. So the original paradigm goes something like this. You have a patient that presents with signs and symptoms suggesting an acute coronary syndrome. And then the immediate action from an assessment standpoint is to rapidly obtain a 12 lead ECG. And then based on the interpretation of that 12 lead ECG, that patient would fall into one of two categories. And those categories would be based on our assessment of the ST segment. If the patient met certain criteria where the ST segment was elevated, the J point was elevated above the baseline, and uh, the thresholds tended to be um, either a one of two thresholds, and that would include one ST elevation of two millimeters or greater in a single lead, or ST elevation of one millimeter or greater in two or more contiguous leads. If those conditions were met, then the patient would be classified as a STEMI, an ST elevation myocardial infarction. And if not, we would categorize that patient as an NSTEMI slash USA, non-ST elevation myocardial infarction slash unstable angina. And we say that the STEMI patient would mandate immediate cath lab activation. And the NSTEMI would not necessitate a, an immediate cath lab activation. They could um, actually wait anywhere from uh, 24 to possibly 48 hours or more before they go to the cath lab. So this is kind of the system that we've been using to differentiate uh, patients with suspected acute coronary syndromes based on 12 lead ECG interpretation. Here's the problem. Here's a problem. Uh, when we look at this, we know, based on studies I've already talked about, that the morbidity and mortality rates for patients diagnosed with NSTEMI using this paradigm can be as high or higher than STEMI patients. And we suspect that is due to a delay in care, i.e. they don't go to the cath lab. Additionally, it has been found that approximately 25 to 30% of patients that fall into the NSTEMI category will end up having 100% occlusion of a coronary artery when they end up going to the cath lab. So what does this mean? This means that we are potentially missing or undiagnosing or inappropriately treating up to a third of patients that we categorize as in STEMI. So the question I ask is, does it make sense to use a paradigm where so many people are not receiving timely and appropriate care? And uh, my assertion is that is not the case. And so the newer paradigm that has begun to arise and proliferate is based on the uh, 2017 work 
uh, by um, Weingart Smith et al. Um, called the Om Omi or the Omi Manifesto. And it more or less looks like the following. You have a patient with signs and symptoms suggesting acute coronary syndrome. We obtain a 12 lead. And then based on the findings of that 12 lead, we categorize the patient as either OMI, occlusion myocardial infarction, or NOMI, non-occlusion myocardial infarction. And an OMI is a situation where you have a total or near total occlusion of a coronary artery, artery without effective collateral circulation that results in active infarction. And if we use the old paradigm, that would only include STEMI, right? Would not include other things, right? But we understand that OMI is um, a process that transcends mere STEMI, all right? And then NOMI or non-occlusion myocardial infarction is where you do not have occlusion or you have enough significant collateral circulation that um, you do not have um, as pronounced um, injury, ischemia, and infarction as you would see with OMI. So when we talk about OMI, there are specific things that fall under the umbrella of OMI. So STEMI, the classic STEMI findings would still fall under OMI. So we're not forgetting about STEMI patients, but what we're doing is we are also including other things under the umbrella, such as hyperacute T waves, such as the South African flag sign and highlateral, um, highlateral wall MI, uh, such as the winter T waves. such as um, po positive modified uh, Smith-Scarbosa criteria when um, assessing a left bundle branch block or a ventricular paced rhythm. Um, the presence of posterior wall MI. A subtle, subtle ST elevation so ST elevation that does not meet traditional uh, STEMI criteria, but subtle ST elevation with reciprocal changes. Reciprocal changes are actually a powerful indicator of myocardial infarction. All right. So these are all findings that fall under the umbrella of OMI, and these are all patients that would do well to go to the cath lab immediately as opposed to being delayed. And so traditionally, many of these patients with these other findings would be categorized as an NSTEMI slash USA when in fact they are having an, a substantial infarction and would really do need immediate cath lab activation so they can have PCI to minimize morbidity and mortality, all right? So hopefully this helps explain the major a big picture difference between the traditional STEMI in STEMI paradigm and the newer OMI slash NOMI paradigm that is more inclusive and allows us to identify additional categories of patients who would traditionally not receive timely or appropriate treatment. Hopefully this is helpful and hopefully this makes sense. Thank you all so much and we'll see you in the next video.